Hi guys, welcome back. This is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials, and today we're going to do a tutorial on uh, end particles, and we're going to play around with that a little bit, okay? Just to get a feeling of, you know, what they are, how they work, and so forth. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, create a simple container shape, let's say a cube. So in our polygon drop down menu, we're going to select a polygon cube. We're going to drag out a cube and pull it up, something like that. Hit 5 for shaded mode. Right-click on the object, go to face, select the top face, and hit delete. So we've got this little box here, okay? I'm going to right-click, go to object mode, and I'm just going to hit W and pull it up just a little, like so. All right? Doesn't really matter as long as we've got some sort of container. Okay. So now we want to create end particles. Now... Where do we do that? We go up to our end dynamics menu, right there. And in our end dynamics menu, we have the option to select end particles. If we, in end particles, go to create end particles, we've got a couple of options here. Down here, these selection or check boxes, we can select the shape of the particle. So do we want points, balls, a kind of a cloud structure, a thick cloud, or a water? We're going to go with a ball shape right now. Okay, so hang on. Yeah, ball shape. And up here, we can either select to create a particle, create an emitter that will uh, spit out particles, if you will. Uh, we can also emit from the object itself. Now, uh, just a scenario where you would do that. Let's say you modeled a piece of wood that is burnt, okay, and it's still smoking. If you were to select, let's say, the cloud shape particle, and you would make that a black cloud, right? You would apply negative gravity to it, so instead of going down, it will go up. And you would emit it from your object, you would have black smoke coming off your burnt piece of wood. That's just a, an option, okay? And you can also uh, select fill object. Let's say you have a glass, and you want to fill that with water, right? So we're going to leave it in the selection balls here, right? And we're gonna go to create emitter and we're gonna hit our option box. Make sure that you go up to edit and reset settings just to make sure you have no previous settings going on. Uh, the emitter type here, okay? I got an omni, which means that the direction will be going everywhere in all directions, right? You can have it directional or you can have volume. We're gonna leave it at omni right now. Now, the rate is the number of particles per second that are coming out of the emitter, okay? And we've got some other uh, speed and so forth, but we'll look at that in a sec. So we're just going to hit Create. And as you can see, we have our Move Tool arrow here. So I'm just going to go underneath our box. We got this arrow here and our Nucleus. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit W and we're going to pull those up, like so. Okay, so now we are ready to emit particles. It's on top of my box, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to play this. And what do I mean by play this? This is a simulation. We got moving parts, we got balls emitted from the emitter, and uh, for that we need to have frames in our animation slider. Now this is not enough. If I were to hit play now, probably um, the particles coming out of the emitter wouldn't even hit the box, but we'll give it a try. Just going to hit play. As you can see, they, they're they gone before they hit the box because we don't have enough frames. So I'm going to stop, go back to the start here. Let's set that to 1,000 and let's try that again. Okay. So much more time now. However, you see that the particles are going straight through the box. Okay, and we'll address that in a sec. I'm going to stop that. We're going to go back to our start position. We're going to select our box, and we want this box to interact with the particles. So while I have this box selected, I'm going to go up to, uh, I think it was NMesh, yeah, NMesh, and click on Create Passive Collider. Okay, we did that. Go back to the start of our animation, and let's try this again. 
And what you see now is that they are suddenly interacting with the box. And actually, if I had enough frames to play this out, the box would be filled with these balls. All right? It's pretty cool, huh? Now, I want to show you a few things while this is playing out. So I'll just go back to the start. I'm going to hit play. If we go into our uh, nucleus, we have a couple of options. For example, we have a gravity setting. Now, if I were to drag down that gravity, you see that if I'm at zero, suddenly they're just floating out of the space. There's no gravity anymore. There's no reason for the particles to fall down. Okay. If I increase that gravity, there we go. It just drops. And the higher the gravity, the faster they will fall, which is, you know, kind of a natural phenomenon. So that's normal. All right. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Now, we can also select a gravity direction. Let's say uh, I'm going to do 5 here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Everything's going nuts. My gravity is going straight in this direction here. So I'm going to bring that back to 0. And suddenly they're falling straight down again. So you get the picture. Your x, y, and z, you can decide in what direction you want your gravity to be. Now, in this case, it's a negative 1 on y, so they're falling straight down. You can play with air density, which if you increase that tremendously, you would slow down the balls. But you can also play with wind speed. Let's do that. As you can see, uh, we're just starting off with our new uh, our first frame again. By increasing the wind speed, you see that they're reacting to that. And the reason why they are moving to the right is because of this wind direction here. Okay? So if I were to set that to zero, then although there's a lot of wind, there's no direction. Okay? So we're going to go back. We're going to set that to two. And there we go. Pretty neat, huh? I'll set that back to one and we'll decrease the wind speed. Now, one other option you got is uh, your wind noise. If you have a steady wind in one direction that is not changing at all, that is not very realistic. So by increasing wind noise, uh, what it will do is it will fluctuate somewhat, right? And that will give it a bit of a cooler effect, all right? So uh, a couple of things you can do there. now. Another thing that I want to show you, and I'll just uh, stop this, go back to frame one, is if I select this box and make it much smaller, so hit R, scale it down, uh, maybe not too small. Make sure your emitter is still on top of your box, and I'll just switch my top view to check that. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to restart my animation, and I'm going to show you what happens when you uh, have the box all filled up. So we're at frame one again. I'm going to hit play. And the neat thing here is that if you just uh, wait a second, you're going to see that they will uh, the box will overflow. And you already saw some of them. Um, the balls will just actually fall out of the box and just fall down into space, so to speak. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a bit better. Okay, so you see that they're falling down there. Now that wouldn't be ideal um, because if you have a scene, uh, you wouldn't want balls going straight through the floor and so forth. Okay, so we're going to go back to our start frame. We're going to create a ground plane for our scene. Let's say the floor in the living room or whatnot. Okay. Make sure that our box is sitting on that floor. So pull that down. Like that. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to select that floor. And we're going to do the same that we did with this box here. Which is, we're going to go to Enmesh. Create Passive Collider. We've got our scene set at frame 1. Going to zoom back in. And we're going to hit play again. So now they should overflow and they should react to the ground floor. And as you can see, they do. All right. Cool. We're just going to stop that for a sec. 
Now, like I said, there are a lot of things you can do with this. This is just an introduction, uh, introduction tutorial to get a sense of what end particles are. Uh, but I encourage you to play around with all these settings. You can create smoke, you can create water, uh, you can create all sorts of uh, neat things. Okay. Uh, I think uh, for a first introduction, this uh, would be enough. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching this quick tutorial. And if you get any requests, let me know. And see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.